cops are responsible for upholding the law, but what happens when the same cops end up being the ones breaking it? Here are different cases of idiot cops who got caught and humbled instantly. Trying to shove weed down your pants? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Retired cop, right? 20 years, huh? Real great, buddy. 20 years. Thanks for your service. This is Brenton Hodge, a 55-year-old former police officer with Ormond Beach Police Department. On May 5th, 2019, Flagler County deputies were responding to the site of a crash on US-1. Brenton's car had suffered rear-end damage, whereas the other car had collided head-on. As the deputy approached Brenton's car, he was fumbling with a cooler on the passenger seat. Hey, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What was all in the cooler? Yeah. Okay. Who, how many people were in this car? Me. Just you? Yep. Okay. Which way were you going? I was trying to make a U-turn here. A bunch of Good Samaritans had stopped and diverted the traffic after the crash. And... Sir, I'm not sure. We're just going to walk the car through. Oh, you all make sure traffic is going. Thank you guys so much. Oh. Did you guys witness it? No, unfortunately we did not. Okay. We might need help getting out if we blocked it off. Good. Nobody's Thank you. I'll get you out of here. Give me a few. Did you witness anything? No. So we're calling M14. Who's in these two cars, you know? The big guys in the Mercedes and the other guys in the Mercedes. Just the Mercedes and both big guys. Oh, just the Mercedes? Okay. Hodge seems disoriented and is giving conflicting statements about drinking. Do you need an ambulance for you? No, I just... I know, he's... We'll get you in a few minutes, okay, bud? We got someone coming to check you out, okay? Okay, all right. Was it just you in the car? Okay. One 10 player. It's going to be two vehicles involved. One male is possibly a signal one. One patient, head injuries from an airbag. Stay in the car for me, bud. Do you have your driver's license and registration insurance? Where were you drinking at? Huh? Is this car... What? This car reeks of booze, man. Oh. Um, I know. Yeah, why? Because I took my trash out earlier. Uh-huh. And the bag... Charlie, uh, there's 14 Huh? You took your trash out, so that's why your car smells like alcohol? The trash bag had a lot of beer cans in it. Uh-huh. And it leaked on my seat. Why is it coming off your breath? Okay, were you drinking earlier? Somewhere? Uh, no. You haven't drank anything all day? Oh no, I did earlier. Yeah, okay, well, that's what I was saying. Lunch or whatever. Okay. That's that. Alright. Look. I know where you're going. I'm okay. Tired. I appreciate your service, but you were just in a bad crash and you reek of alcohol. At this point, the story narrated by Hodge of how the crash happened in the first place does not add up. The officer suspects that Hodge is lying about the direction he was going in. What? I didn't... I wasn't moving! What do you mean you weren't moving? I was stopped! Where were you stopped? Right there! Okay, which way were you going? That way to make a U-turn You were going south? Here. Okay, to make a U-turn? Yeah. So he came into the middle there and hit you? I... I I was just trying to make a U turn to go home. To go home to where? Well, I'm not from here. I've only lived in this place for like three days. Where at? Thunder. Thunder Gulch? Yeah. Okay. At this point, the other deputy also gets there, and the first deputy gives an account of what he knows so far. This guy has got a strong smell of alcohol coming off him. His eyes are all bloodshot and glassy. He was fumbling with his cooler when I got here. 
I was like, what's in the cooler? And he was like, oh, nothing, it's empty. But on the passenger floorboard, there's a bunch of beer cans. Some of them are still in the floor pack. Huh? He actually said that he was southbound, and he said that he was going to make a U-turn to go back to Thunder Gulch, where he just moved into. So it looks like he actually, when he made the U-turn, pulled out in front of him. And it looks like he smashed into him. Right? He was probably going northbound. So he uh, he tried to he tried to badge me. He's a retired cop, but yeah, that ain't gonna that ain't gonna do nothing. So he he kind of knew where I was going when I started asking him all the beer questions. You can do one in the other traffic unit can do the other. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Whatever you want to do. As the paramedics are helping Hodge out of the car, something odd happens. It seems like Hodge was not only drinking, but he was also smoking pot while driving. What? I mean, that's alright. Because then they can just get blood from him. Hey, what are you just grabbing that back? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. What did he just no. grab? Put it what down. is that? Put it down. Come on, man. Seriously? Are you kidding me? Come on. Uh, put your hand on your back. Well, no, I'm going to the no, hospital. No, we'll take you to the yeah, hospital. You go to the hospital. We'll go with us. All right. Trying to shove weed down your pants? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Retired cop, right? 20 years, huh? Real great, buddy. 20 years. Thanks for your service. Dude, he grabbed this under the driver's seat and tried to shove it down the front of his pants. I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> that was the cooler that he's trying to dump on the ground. Ooh, reeks of weed. The bag contained several smaller bags of marijuana that weighed more than an ounce. Hodge was taken to the county jail where his bail was set at $3,500. But if you think the abuse of authority here was intense, wait until you hear just how similar this next case is and how much longer the cops persisted. I don't want to communicate with you anymore. I do not want to communicate with you anymore. This is my this is my residence. You are trespassing as of right now because I have asked you several times to remove your foot out of my home. So at this time, public servant, you are trespassing. On June 13th, 2020, the Arlington Police Department received a call where the caller claimed to have heard a male and female arguing at a nearby house. The call led them to Christopher Finley's house. The events before an officer put his foot in Finley's door are not publicly available, but as soon as that happened, Finley started streaming on Facebook Live. Please remove your, please, listen, listen, sir. Listen, listen. I don't want to talk anymore, sir. I, I'm, I'm asking you again sir. to please remove, I'm an unarmed citizen in my home, sir. in my home, in my home. I'm asking you, sir, to please remove your foot because that's, to me, that's threatening, sir. So again, I'm sir, I'm asking you, please, this is, you're, you're now in my home. Sir, you sir, are a public servant, okay. I, sir. I understand that, sir. It is me and my son, okay, just listen. and I'm asking you, okay. can you listen to please remove your okay. foot. Can you listen? You're not coming in my home. Okay, just listen, listen, sir. That's, there's nothing else to listen to. You're not coming in my home. Sir. I'm asking you to please leave. I'm not going to okay. close my door and continue with my day. Okay. You guys have a good day, officer. Okay. Have a good... Well, sir, do not, sir. Sir, sir this is my home. <laughs> sir, this is my home. Sir, do not touch my door. Okay. Have a good day, officer. There, I'm no longer speaking with you. I am was no longer speaking with you. You are not needed in this home. Was there a disturbance? I am no longer speaking with you. You are not welcome in my home. Y'all have a good day, officer. Sir, we're, we're not asking you. Not have a good... Say, sir, sir, again. We're not again, you. officer, again. Please remove your foot. Out of my home. Okay, was there a disturbance here? I am no longer communicating with you, sir. We're just trying to make sure. I'm telling okay. you that I do not need you guys. We're not saying it is me and my son, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, now I'm not in trouble. Despite repeated requests from Finley for the police to leave his house, they didn't even so much as take their foot away from the door. But were they within their authority? For those who don't know, a person only commits criminal trespass if their entire body is on another's property without the proper consent. So in this sense, the police weren't committing trespass by putting their foot in the door. And I'm armed, I am peaceful, and in my residence. I'm asking this man to remove his foot from my home. Sir, at this time, you are a public servant. I do not have to speak to you. If you would like to enter my residence, please come back with the warrant. That's it. CJ. CJ. 
Because CJ, we have to come in are you okay? Is okay. So, okay, from the door, from the door. This is my six-year-old son. CJ, you okay, baby boy? Okay, go back in the room and close the door. Again, sir. You're being irrational right now. No, I'm not, sir. This is my home. You are trying to invade my home. We have to do it well. You're trying to invade my home. Sure You're looking at the residence. I'm well. You're looking at the residence. I'm well. And again, at this point, you really violating my rights with your foot in my property. Sir, you're not listening to us. I, I don't have to. You are a public servant. I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to listen to you. I don't, sir, I'm not, I don't, you knocked on my door. I'm not asking you for, I didn't, I didn't call y'all to tell me to come give y'all, I didn't tell y'all to come give me an explanation. Y'all knocked on my door. Sir, we got a call to this location. Sir, That's why you didn't here. get a call to this location. Then you did not get a call to this location. While one can understand Finley's insistence, especially since he claims no one made a call from his home, one must also think from the officer's perspective. It may be a failure to perform their duty if they don't carry out all due diligence. However, they didn't even try to confirm the address, despite this man's insistence that the call didn't come from his home. In an even more jarring turn of events, the police forced their way in, picking at every bit of evidence they could find, however, None of it panned out into something substantial. So you're going to continue to violate my rights, officer? Sir, I'm not violating you. You are. Rights. This is my property. I understand. This is my property. You are a public servant. I it, you don't have a signed warrant. Yes, you do not have a signed warrant, and your foot is in my property. So again, sir, I'm asking you to remove your foot out of my property. Are you going to listen? No, sir, I am not going to listen. I told you what it is at this point. You guys are public servants. You're at the wrong door. You will not be coming in my into my home. So, sir, you don't have permission to speak to my son. Sir, so, CJ, y'all gonna do this in front of my child? Y'all gonna do this in front of my child? CJ, y'all gonna do this in front of my child? Y'all are gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Stop hurting your child. CJ, y'all gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Go in the room. CJ, go in the room. Y'all really gonna do this in front of my child, bro? Y'all doing this in front of my child. Bro, say, let me go. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Okay. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of my home. Let me go and get out of y'all. Why I'm finna sue the shit out of all you bitches. Say, don't touch my son. Say, move. Move away from my child, son. Move away from my son. Move away from my son. CJ, 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 be quiet. Do not say anything, child. Move away from my son. Get out of my home, bitch boy. 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 CJ, go back in the room. Is he cut? Nigga, I, I'm, a proud, blood, I'm a good right black father, son. I, I don't put my hands on my son. It's just blood on my there's son. Blood, that ain't blood. I got a dog, dummy. A That's no blood. And there's blood. That's a snack bowl. You see the snacks, dumbass? That's a snack bowl. I have a dog, dumb dumb. Say, all y'all violated my rights. Get the fuck out my house. Get the fuck out my house. Bitch ass niggas. Bitch ass niggas. Saying, don't hurt your son when it wasn't confirmed that Finley was doing that, was very wrong on the officer's part. Finley said that the officers followed him in his truck when he left his home later that same day, but it is uncertain whether he eventually pressed charges against them. You, know, um, look, you, you just said a moment ago to this jury that you didn't know if it had evidentiary value or not. Okay. You just said that a moment ago, and now you're saying that you already looked at it and it didn't have evidentiary value. Which one okay. is it? So, as I just stated a couple seconds ago, it did not appear to have evidentiary value. I did not examine it. I did not open it up at this point and examine it. This is Deputy Zachary Wester, who was arrested in 2019 when he was caught on his own body cam video planting drugs in innocent citizens' vehicles during traffic stops. He was put in front of a jury for the cases of racketeering, fabricating evidence, official misconduct, false imprisonment, and possession of controlled drugs and paraphernalia. Okay, like several of the other listed victims in the case, she consents to the search of her car, doesn't she? Her she truck. does. She does, yes. She mentions that she's got five dollars that's missing um, in that in that video before you find anything, isn't that right? That is correct, yes. Okay. She's specifically drawing your attention to, to her purse or her pocketbook because she's missing five dollars, isn't that right? Correct, yes. She's not trying to take her purse with her when she gets out of the car and goes st and stands with backup deputy Heike, is she? I don't believe so, no. Video doesn't show, and, and the video right. doesn't depict it. Do you remember hearing it? I do not remember it, right. Okay, so she didn't try to take her purse. 
Now you say, you've testified on direct that you don't dispute that there's something in your hand like those photos the state's exhibits depict. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I don't dispute that at all. Your dispute is that you say that it's not the same item that you charged Teresa Odom with, correct? Correct. It is not the same item, right. It was a different baggie is what you say, correct? Correct. Okay. Where on your body camera video do we see you handle that baggie and, and either picking it up or putting it down or looking at it closely to determine what's in it? Are you referring to the baggie that was in my hand before I put my search gloves on? Yes, sir. Okay. So as you noticed on the video, there were multiple semis, multiple vehicles driving by in the opposite direction. Whenever I put that baggie in the front driver's side floorboard, I never seen it again. I'm not sure if it's because when a semi came through, it blew it into the roadway. After I found the baggie in her purse containing methamphetamine, and after I found the spoon, which was used as paraphernalia, there was really no need for me to go walk across 231 at the busiest time of the day to try to find something that I didn't even know was evidentiary value or not. How could the body cam go off just when he was handling a baggie that he says was not of evidentiary value and hadn't even confirmed its contents? This clearly shows that there's something wrong with the procession of events and it raises the suspicions even higher. Why'd you set it down on the floorboard if you didn't know if it had evidentiary value or not? Why'd so you set it down? If it was already in your hand, why would you set it down on the floorboard with that setting like you've just described to the jury if you didn't even know if it had evidentiary value or not? So that I could search the vehicle. How about searching what's in your hand? How about that? Wouldn't it make more, wouldn't you agree that it would make more sense to start with what's already in your hand before you, if, if, if it indeed was a different thing, that it would make more sense to start with what's already in your hand before you set it down on the floorboard on admittedly a busy road. Yeah. In this particular case, no, that would not make sense because whenever I looked at the bag, it did not appear, as I testified earlier, that it was of evidentiary value. You don't um, look, you, you just said a moment ago to this jury that you didn't know if it had evidentiary value or not. Okay. You just said that a moment ago, and now you're saying that you already looked at it and it didn't have evidentiary value. Which one okay. is it? So, as I just stated a couple seconds ago, it did not appear to have evidentiary value. I did not examine it. I did not open it up at this point and examine it. It did not appear to be of anything of evidentiary value. Deputy Wester changed his statement entirely, and the high contradiction in the two statements of his in a couple of minutes shows how confused and dishonest he is about what happened. At what point on that video do you have time, or does it even show you looking at it to make some type of a reasonable inference as to whether or not it had evidentiary value. Sure. So whenever I went to the passenger side of Miss Odom's truck, from the passenger side, you could pretty much see the whole front cabin of that vehicle. <clears throat> whenever I looked across, I noticed that that particular item that was in my hand was no longer on the driver's side floorboard. Didn't really concern me that much because I'd found methamphetamine in her purse and I had found the spoon. Like I said earlier, Mr. Williams, I was not going to walk across Highway 231 or shut down traffic to try to find something that was most likely just a piece of trash. It was already in your hand and you made a conscious decision to set it on the floorboard, didn't you? I did, yes. Did you or did you not look at it? This is this is assuming that uh, clearly we're disputing this, okay? That it's a 100 different 100% we are, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, your, your testimony is that it was a different item, and in order for you to put it on the ground, you had to determine whether or not it had evidentiary value because it was already in your hand. So from it going from your left hand onto the floorboard, at what point do you stop and look at it and handle it the way you do all the other exhibits that you found in sure. all the other videos to make that decision, if, well, that, if it was indeed different? Okay. I would not have opened up a baggie with my bare hands, first of all. I will say that. Um, your so, hand? Your, no, no, no. I'm sorry. We need to. We need to. Let me break that down. It's already in your bare hands. You've already picked it up in your bare hand. Correct. Okay. So what difference is opening it up with your bare hands going to make? 
But Mr. Williams, I didn't open it up and turn it inside out for the contents, if there were any contents, to get on my bare skin. Was it a clear baggie? I believe it was an off-white baggie. You could have seen inside it, couldn't you? I don't believe I could have. With this particular baggie, I don't believe I could have because from what I remember, it was an off-white, almost an eggshell white. You can't give a consistent answer on this because there isn't a consistent answer, correct? As the trial goes on, the contradictions in Deputy Wester's statements keep on growing, and he is unable to give a consistent answer to any of the prosecutor's questions. This is what happens when a person is guilty and he tries to defend himself with all the lies he can think of, but the truth always shows itself in the end. As for Deputy Wester, the jury could see through his lies and gave him 12 and one half years in prison. But if you think this officer was bad, wait till you see what this next officer did. You work for the sheriff's office? How long you worked over there for? Three years. Three years. This is Deputy John Guzman with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. On October 15th, 2022, two officers of St. Cloud Police Department found him passed out of his senses in the parking lot of a Walmart. Watch what happens when the officers find out who they are about to arrest is Sheriff's deputy. Sir, are you okay? Hello? Hello, sir? We might have a signal one over here. Sir, is your foot on the brake there? Hey, sir. Are you okay? Two doors rain closed with John Guzman at a 249 7 7 7 Excuse me, sir. Are you okay? And then think turn the vehicle off, okay? Let's turn the vehicle off, sir. Huh? Yeah, I'm trying to turn the freaking car off. There, can you just hold it back so I can... Hi, yeah, put the vehicle in park, sit by the vehicle. He was like... Oh, careful. Oh, All right. Have, have, have a seat over there. Step over here, sir. I'm going to take a seat. Have a seat. What's going on, sir? Are you okay? No, no, I'm not okay. You're not okay? No. When I saw you, you were outside of the vehicle. In the car. Yeah. The car is still in drive. Right. What's going on tonight? You had loads of drink? Huh? Have you had something to drink tonight? No, I'm just waiting. I'm just trying to go home. You're trying to go home? Yeah. Okay. Do you have your license on you? Huh? Is your license in the vehicle? No, I'm in my, I'm not, I'm not. Okay. Deputy Guzman is hammer drunk. His speech is slurred and his words are incoherent. There is vomit on his sweater as well. The officers begin to investigate him and that's when they find out that he is a cop himself. What's your name? John. John what? Guzman. John Guzman. Where are you coming from tonight? A friend's house? Okay. I live right down the street. Okay. Where's your, where's your driver's license, sir? In the car. It's in the car. I can't. I, I don't know where it is. It's, it's fine. Car. Just keep your hands out your pockets for me, okay? Where are you coming from? I was at a friend's house. You were at a friend's house doing what? Yeah. Huh? What were you doing? I was hanging out with a friend. You were hanging out with a friend. Yeah. Okay. You realize when I saw you, you were passed out, head out of the window, throw up next to you on the ground. Passed out. You passed out yeah. while driving. Get your hands out of your pockets, please. Thank you. You work for the sheriff's office? How long you worked over there for? Three years. Three years. At this point, 
the officers have enough circumstantial evidence to suspect Deputy Guzman of being drunk while driving. They frisk him down, read him his Miranda rights, and proceed to handcuff him. You don't have to have any weapons on you, do you? No, We're just going to pass it down real quick. You're okay? You can stand up for it. Your duty weapon is not on you or in the vehicle. You might talk to a lawyer and have him present before, before and during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, we'll be appointed to represent you at finding sense before any question may be with. If you give your rights to remain silent, later wish to stop answering questions, no further questions will be asked. Do you understand each of these rights as I, as I explain them to you? Yes. Having a right to mind you, which talk to you now. No. Okay. Look, based on my training and experience, we're passed out behind the wheel, and physical control by people. We're all about side of the car. Profound odor of alcohol on your body. Okay? And your blood drop water, guys, on top of that. I'm going to afford you this time to uh, complete a series of field at sobriety exercises. Is that something you wish to do? No. Okay. Do me a favor, go ahead and stand up for me. Turn around. Deputy Guzman was taken to the Osceola County Jail. He was immediately relieved of all operational duties, pending the completion of his criminal trial. While this next case doesn't involve a drunk officer, it shows another situation where citizens feel the need to be protected from law enforcement. On March 12, 2023, the Erie Police Department SWAT team officers, Pennsylvania Police Fugitive Task Force, and U.S. Marshals arrived in front of Lance Thornton's house. 52-year-old Mr. Thornton, who suffered from early-onset dementia, was rightly puzzled by the situation. Barring that, for a man who woke up to find so many law enforcement officers outside his house banging down his door, this was undoubtedly a scary situation. The doorbell camera was recording up until the officers ripped it out and threw it in the snow. When Mr. Thornton didn't show up on time, the officers began breaking down the door, but fortunately he showed up before they broke it down completely. After a while, Mr. Thornton pulled out his phone to record the whole incident. Not gonna be, we're not here for you. Then I'm being told to put my phone down. I, have, I was told I had a right to pull it. That is my rental car. Your rental? Yes. You got a picture of him? What is going? You're not allowed inside. I want to know what's going on. I'm tell you what's wrong. Then you tell me right now. Relax. No, this is my house. Relax. No, you're gonna. Talk to you right you now. No. That's who we're looking for. He in your house right is now. He in your house right now. No, there's nobody in my house. Wanted for attempted homicide, three officers. Okay, so that's why we're here. You guys. We're not here for anything else. We're here for that. That's okay. It. You got my word. All right. Can we go in and look to make sure he's not in there? Okay, here's... What? Just, go you, ahead. Yeah, whatever you're just going to say. You don't want to put yourself in the jackpot. If he's in there, this is... No, I swear to you right now. Okay, time. right now. No, I don't know him. No, listen, right now. I do not like your attitude and the way you came across. Because I said, can I pull my... I'm going to pull my phone out of my pocket and just suggest. When I said I'm going to start recording, you stole me to turn it off. We have our camera on. We're recording right now. Too. I'm going to get a, every one of these because I do not know what's going on here. Listen. Here's the deal. We got a tip that that guy is here at your house. That's why I want to say this guy's a warrant for attempted homicide three officers. Okay, a tip came in that this guy is staying at your house. You understand? Over the over the weekend. Who are you guys with? U.S. Marshals, US Marshal. EPD SWAT. What's PSP? EPD? Police? Police okay, okay, keep going. And PSP. What's PSP? Pennsylvania State Police. Okay, I'm shaking right now. Right now, if this is true, what you're telling me, yes. I give you full permission, full run of my house. You know this guy. Sir, I already answered that I, question, I that. asked and answered. But here's the thing, though. There's a reason why this call, this tip was called into the marshals, okay? There's a connection between you and this guy. Now, it might not be directly, okay? Do you have a girlfriend? Just hear him out. Just hear him My out. wife is an ER doctor. Who's your, who's your wife? Susan Maluli. Okay. Do you have any connection with a, another female? 
in this house. Is there another girl, woman that stays here? A girl? No. Nobody else? No. Okay, who's hope to you? My daughter. Okay, where does she stay at? She lives in Washington, D.C. She's a, she's a, this is my daughter? We don't know, okay? Again, this is a tip that's called into from, from the, to the U.S. Marshals and PSP hotline, okay? Saying that this guy is staying here at your house right now. This week. Go inside, guys. Go inside. Well, we will in a second. We don't have to go to more than just two guys, but this, and this is why, okay? That's why we're here is the show force we are. These guys tried shooting three cops last summer. You, who's fixing my door? Because you broke it the way you kicked it. It's not broken. No, door? I saw the inside. The door? Yes, whoever was kicking that door when I was coming downstairs okay. peacefully, you had to hear my feet coming. Uh, Someone's paying for this, so go ahead, yeah. do do your thing. That's fine. Do I, your I, job because you have me so scared right now and so mad. That. I appreciate that. Do you guys have a, a warrant, by the way? No, do you have a warrant from a house? I'm just asking no, so I know. No, no. you don't have a circle over your house. You, you do us, not have a... You gave us consent to get I'm giving you consent, but I can withdraw it at any time, right? You don't have a circle over your Because I'm scared right now. Yeah, Mr. Thornton gave the officers consent to enter his house, even though they didn't have a warrant. He was told he could withdraw his consent at any time, but when he did try to withdraw it, the officers turned a deaf ear. What's the relationship with my daughter? I'll explain. I'm not with this girl. Okay. Why? This is... This is Total transparency because the, I'm just giving you permission to walk into my house. I can re, I can withdraw it right now. So you I tell me now where I'm, I withdraw it. I'm going to draw so, this consent. So Sirs, get out of my house. You're, you're, I'm withdrawing consent. I am withdrawing consent. Do you now hear it? You're on camera. They're still moving forward. Do you, under, do you, want, do you want to understand? So there's a tip called in that Mr. Jones was here at your residence. Okay. They're still going in. I, I withdrew my consent. You guys even knew I could do it. They're still you searching. Want I, I already called them out. Okay. Because you won't tell me the truth. I have dementia right now, and I'm really scared. Okay. Well, there's no reason to be scared. We're not here I to told him to stop the consent until I got the truth, and you already told him, and he's still searching my house. Here's the thing. I have enough security cameras in there. They're on scared. They heard me. We draw consent and they're still continuing in there. You you we're you not, violated my rights. We're not, I went forth. Not, listen, you gave us consent to search, okay? We're and I withdrew it. Mr. Thornton withdrew his consent and repeated this fact multiple times, but the officers made no attempt to come out despite having told him that he could. This was a violation of his rights and an inability to keep their word on their side. They essentially turned a deaf ear to the cold and scared man even after he told them about his medical condition. To make matters worse, not only did they not find anyone in the house, but they also ruined the carpet in two rooms and refused to fix Mr. Thornton's door as his daughter would later reveal. He requested body cam footage from the police, but his request was denied. And more unfortunately, he suffered a stroke shortly after, most likely an effect of the incident. Do I have to answer that yes or no? Or can I make somewhat of a statement? That's that what is, I... That is a yes or no answer, sir. Well, I have the opportunity to say anything further. This is a recently retired Breckenridge County Sheriff, Todd Pate, who found himself on the stand for a case of DUI or driving under the influence in March 2019 when another driver was injured in a car crash caused by him. He is put in front of the judge to plead guilty as per documents signed by him and his lawyer, Mr. Vows. We're here this uh, afternoon. Initially, it was set as a pretrial conference that was continued from a January pretrial conference, the purpose of which was to further address uh, any motion, including motion uh, to transfer venue, and also then to get this matter set for trial. The court has subsequently been advised that uh, the attorneys have uh, negotiated uh, a resolution of this case on guilty plea. It is further my understanding that the terms of that plea have been uh, fully discussed uh, with uh, is that your phone, Mr. Payne? Yes, it is. You need to put it away. Okay. I was just had a. You need to put it away. Okay. We've been fully discussed uh, with uh, the attorneys and the victims in this case, and that uh, the terms of the plea have been uh, previously been agreed to by Mr. Payne. At this time, Mr. Vows, does it remain your uh, your clients? Do, intent to enter a guilty plea here today? I think you better ask him that question. Mr. Kate, if you'll raise your right hand in this room, please. 
Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? So, so help you God. Yes, I do. State your name, please. Jerome Todd Pate. And Mr. Pate, what is the last four digits of your social security number? 1120. And what is your date of birth? It's October 15th, 1969. Have you ever been told that you suffer from any mental illness or condition that affects your ability to think or to reason? I've been told that I have PTSD, depression, but not that I am. No, I don't think that I have anything wrong with me at this time. Are you currently receiving any treatment? Depression, anxiety. Okay. Uh, are you currently taking any medication for uh, depression and anxiety? Yes, I am. All right. And have you taken that medication as prescribed? Yes. Are you under the influence of any other drugs or alcohol today? No, ma'am. Have you taken any <clears throat> over the counter medication that contains codeine, any histamine, or any other substance that would affect your ability to think clearly? No, ma'am. At this time, is it your desire to change your plea uh, from not guilty to guilty? Do I have to answer that yes or no, or can I make somewhat of a statement? That's that what is, I. That is a yes or no answer, sir. Will I have the opportunity to say anything further? If you, it is your intention to change your plea from not guilty to guilty, then I will take your plea, and certainly you'll have an opportunity to make any statement that you <coughs> want to make. But if it is not your intent to enter a guilty plea at this time, then I'm going to set your case for jury trial, and you're going to stop wasting my time and everybody else's time. Ma'am, I'm not trying to waste your time. Then, then <laughs> is it your intention to enter a guilty plea at this time or not? Sir? No. Why am I wasting your time? Mr. Pate, once an officer of the law, here decides to not follow simple instructions of the court and couldn't give a straight yes or no answer when asked if he is pleading guilty today. Mr. Pate is purposefully wasting the court's time and continues to give unnecessary remarks which are not required in court, a fact that he should be well aware of. What is Mr. Pate's uh, decision with respect to proceeding forward with entry of his guilty plea? So I believe he's still under oath, and I believe I'll just let him answer that question if it pleases the court. All right. So, uh, Mr. Pate, um, uh, what is your position today with respect to entering the guilty plea here, consistent with the executed documents that have been tendered to you? Can I say a few things, or? I would just like for the court, yes, I had every intention of coming in here today and entering a guilty plea based on the, um, based on the mediation that we had. Uh, it's very difficult for me to enter a guilty plea to felony related charges that I've been in law enforcement for 25 years and never have I ever charged someone with felony charges on a situation pertaining to this. Uh, that was similar to this. The judge is irritated as she should be because Mr. Pate continues to make unrelated remarks in the hearing. He's intent on wasting not only the court's time, but the time of anyone present there with his foolishness. The court was only arranged for him to plead guilty, which he isn't doing, and is simply complicating a simple procedure. Mr. Pate. You know, it, it's, it's difficult for me to enter a guilty plea um, for a lot of reasons, and I don't want this court to think that I am trying to minimize, take away from, or deflect any responsibility that I had in this situation that occurred. Uh, I do absolutely feel like that because of my bad decisions that this whole case took a turn that it wouldn't have taken had it not been the Breckenridge County Sheriff. 
it's difficult for me to plead guilty to felony charges where a prosecutor indicts me and immediately after getting an indictment recuses himself and basically testifies at the grand jury to facts that were not at all and again if I hadn't yet done what I did and drank and drove on March the 8th I would not be sitting here nor would anybody else but I absolutely think I was indicted that prosecutor said got my indictment I will jump out then I made an offer based on those indictments on a Monday we send an email back to Mr. Chambers office to not accept and two days later I'm indicted for assault first one that if you're found guilty you spend 85 percent of this was never an assault first case should have never been an assault first case but it became that, and it became that to push me in a direction to take a plea. I'm willing to take a plea, but I now understand how some people feel. I've defended the court system many, many times, and still do, but I feel like, I feel like I'm being very much bullied into doing something that's not right. Now, the gamble is big. Mr. Chambers wants to go to trial and say, now let me tell you this, that, and the other, then I'm, I'm risking leaving my family, which I did that March 8th when I drank and drove. Thank God I didn't kill anybody. But I want this court to know, I want the people to know, and I want the public to know that Todd Pate holds himself responsible for everything that he did. But it's hard for me to lay down and plead to felony charges that don't apply. And I'm sorry, ma'am, for doing this. I'm sorry for, for... I need to... I think we're back to where we were before. Is that, is it your intention today to enter this guilty plea? I think we're at a yes or no place at that point. Let me just say, let me, can I say one more thing? I think everybody in this room wants this over with. And if I could address Blake. Blake, I hope you learn from this case. I'm not mad at you. I'm not in any way upset with you. Mr. Payne, not that it matters. That point okay. This is either a yes or no. Are you going to enter your plea? <laughs> I guess everybody thinks it's funny. Mr. Pate knows the law and knows how important the time of court is and still keeps on wasting it for no good reason as he has already signed a document agreeing to plead guilty. He's panicked and can't even listen to his lawyer and continues to ramble in court about what should have been and other concerns that are not of the courts at this time. This irritates the judge who has already shown great patience as he cannot make up his mind and can't tell if he is going to plead guilty or not, something that seemingly had already been decided. Just walk, walk right here. Walk right here. Shut the f up. Get right over here. I don't give a f who you are. Get on your f knees. Hey, I'm a cop. Why are you why are you like that? I'm a cop. Then you'll listen to me when I tell you to get on your f knees. Uh, man, I'm a cop, man. Claire, Claire, Claire. You used to work for Miami Dade. This is Officer Donovan William Rojas of the Miami-Dade Police Department, who is about to be arrested by Deputy Joel Torres of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. On the 12th of June, 2022, Deputy Joel Torres observed a Chrysler 300 speeding northbound on US-1 near mile marker 101 at approximately 3.57 a.m. Deputy Torres activated his lights and siren and attempted a traffic stop as the Chrysler reached speeds greater than 110 miles per hour. <laughs> The Chrysler continued to speed northbound and failed to stop for additional deputies who also activated their lights and sirens. After a short chase, the police units succeeded in stopping the fleeing car. 
but the officers were not expecting to see a fellow cop in the driving seat. How many people in the car? Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car right now. Out of the car, I see the air. Hands up in the air! Hands up in the air right now. Turn around, turn around. Turn around, do not face me. Turn around. Turn Just around. walk walk right here. Walk right here. Shut the f up. Get right over turn here. Around. I don't give a f who you are. Get on your f knees. Hey, I'm a cop. Why are you, why are you acting like that? I'm a cop. Then you'll listen to me when I tell you to get on your f knees. Uh, man, I'm a cop, man. Claire, Claire, Claire. You used to work for Miami Dade. I, I that, man. Stand there. Table level. One Imagine. Be quiet. Don't say another word. You hear me? Sit down. Cool, sir. Nice and nice and of course, of course. Yeah. We gotta check this car first. There's, there's guns, radios, and all kinds. What's up, man? I see you in a bit. Deputy Torres shows no restraint for the fact that the person fleeing from the cops was in fact one of them. Instead, he treated Officer Rojas as an ordinary citizen, and even went as far as saying, "You used to work for Miami Dade." suggesting that the arrested officer's career is more or less over. Deputy Torres then proceeds to formally arrest Officer Rojas. Casey, do you have a... Let's do this by the books. Do you happen to have a Miranda card? Yes, sir. Thank you. Boss, what's your first name? Don. Don? Donovan. Donovan. What's your first name? Don't say anything just yet. Understand me? You know how this goes. I get it. I don't want to. Be quiet. Before I ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. Yes. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions. You have a right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning is. Deputy Torres asks whether Officer Rojas is willing for a field sobriety test, but Officer Rojas simply refuses. I feel you're impaired. Me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Are you willing to perform field sobriety exercise to dispel my suspicion that you're impaired? No, sir. No. Okay. Is this an agency vehicle? Yes, sir. This is his agency car. This is his agency car. Uh, I just asked him how to run the tag. I just got here. Um, uh, he and so he doesn't want to talk. He refuses to sobriety exercises. Oh, absolutely, he's. Yeah. Right. Thank you. It is what it is. During the car search. Deputy Torres expresses his disappointment over the criminal behavior shown by his fellow cop. I mean, I was right there with you guys. Bro, worse than a cop. Jesus Christ. Deputy Torres then asks Officer Rojas for some more information before expressing one final time how disappointed he is in his fellow cop for breaking the law and driving under influence. If, if you call Zach, that's my partner. CST Cruz? No. It's Diego. Cruz. I'm sorry. It's, it's going to be Sergeant Cruz. Sergeant Diego Cruz? Yes, sir. What unit do you work for? I work for Gaines. You already invoked your right to remain silent, so I'm not going to ask you any questions, bro. Oh, man. Bro, you, you, this is not the highlight of my day. I know. Uh, bro. Sorry, brother, but... Yep, don't say anything else. I got it for you, Sarge. Sergeant Diego Cruz. Officers from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office took Officer Rojas into custody, and he was promptly taken to jail. Donovan Rojas is being charged not only with DUI, 
but also fleeing and eluding. Because you're over here shining a flashlight in my apartment. Uh, you're over here shining a flashlight, let me finish what I was saying, into my apartment. I mean, you're taking care of Christmas gifts, watching the UFC fight. You guys come over here banging like a bunch of animals. No one called 911. You're giving me a hard time. You're shining. You're still shining a flashlight at me. Turn your flashlight off. You want me? Turn your flashlight off. You're not understanding how this works, man. Have a nice night, guys. No. On December 19th, 2020, the Brunswick Police Department received a 911 hang-up call. Officers McMillan and Hibbett were dispatched to the address from which the call supposedly came. This apartment belonged to a man known only as Mr. Brian B., who claimed that the call hadn't come from his house. Already suspecting that it was going to be a long, complicated issue, Mr. B. recorded the whole incident as it unfolded. Can I help you? Yeah. Everything all right? Everything's yeah, fine. Call. From here? Yeah. Are you the only one home? No. Who else is home with you? My girlfriend and my roommate. All right. Everybody's um, fine. All right. Well, Nobody called. Some, somebody called and they said, it came back to this address. And it said, uh, they told us there was yelling or something in the background initially. Then they hung up and they haven't been able to get in touch with everyone since. So that's and what we're nobody on. called. Everybody's fine. All right. Can we talk to them real quick? No. No, we need to. Well, you're not. We need to. It's not going to happen. You don't, you don't understand how this works. We got a 911 call from this address. We have nobody to... called 911. How do I know that? Uh, bro, oh, how, do, do I have to prove something to you right now? Yes. We have to speak with everyone who lives here to make sure they didn't call 911. As soon as we speak with everyone and we can confirm everything's fine, we leave. That's it, man. We just make sure everything's fine. What's your name and badge number? Macmillan 182. Name badge number? Very right, right there? Is that what you told me? Why are you giving us such a problem? Be well, because you're over here shining a f flashlight in my you apartment. You uh, you're over here shining a flashlight, let me finish what I was saying, into my apartment i mean you're taking care of christmas gifts watching the ufc fight you guys come over here banging like a bunch of animals no one called 911. you're giving me a hard time you're shining you're still shining a flashlight at me turn your flashlight off you want me turn your flashlight off you're not understanding how this works man have a nice night guys no Mr. B's refusal to speak to the cops was well within his rights according to the Fifth Amendment, under which a judge is the only person who can compel a citizen to speak. Breaking the door to gain entry into the house seems like a bit of a stretch, even though the Supreme Court backs this up in the case of extreme emergencies. They said there was a 911. From whose cell phone? What cell phone number? Do y'all have it on record or file or anything? 732 940 Seven nine. Nine four zero seven six seven nine. Who's number is that? Is it, not mine. Mine's just eight four eight four six six. No one's phone number here. All right, well, let's get this sorted out then, so we don't have to come back. All right. What do you want to sort out? What have so we not sorted here. out? We sort it. It's a landline. Okay. Okay. No, there's no landline here. There's landline but there's here. still one registered to this house. So what do you want me to do for you? So there, we solved with a 9 Okay, so door. get the f*** out now. Sir. No, no, sir. You just slammed the door at me. Get the f*** out of the house. You don't close the door on the police. I don't give a f***. You have no right to enter. We do, actually. No, you don't. Do. It's a warrantless entrance, so get the f*** out. Get out. After confirming that the call was from a landline and that there was no landline at Mr. B's address, one would expect the cops to apologize and leave but things only escalated as they started asking for Mr. B's identity. What's your name? Get out. I'm not giving you nothing. Get out. We need your name. Yeah, you're not going to get it. Get out. Yes. Have I committed a crime? Am I suspected of committing a crime? Yes. I have a Fourth Amendment right, bro. Don't trample my rights. You're not going to get ID. Sir, you do have a right. Let's go. We need your name so you can record. Not going to get it. You want us to record that we were out here. What happened? Not going to get it. Okay, so when they call 911 again, you want them to come knocking on your door again. After Mr. B refused to reveal his identity, things only got worse as more cops came into the house until there were about nine of them standing in the room and some even standing at the door. Nine of you out here. What do you have to say that's going to justify any of this? I want to hear it. We came out here to investigate a 911 hang up. Okay, did anybody call? Have you, have you figured that out? No, we haven't. 
Oh, okay, so what do you have to figure out? What do you have to figure out? Is anybody in need of assistance, man? No. Does anybody need assistance? I have zero need for assistance. Perfect. I'm trying to go back and finish watching this movie. Exactly. All right. So can you please? Yeah. Please, okay, please go. Perfect. Have a, have a good day. Have Take good care. Day. Take care. Bye. Have a good day, man. Yep, go f*** yourselves. <laughs> Mr. B stood his ground until the cops left even though he had to repeatedly request it before they did. He decided to take legal action against the officers and even opened a GoFundMe to that effect. We now journey back to court as we see the wrongdoings of Marshall Fox, who arrested a lady for reporting a crime against him. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You can watch the video. The video in the show. I just kind of cut her myself. I'm just trying to stay out of trouble, sir. I never did anything this is Marshall Fox, who sexually assaulted Monica Contreras in her family court hearing in the Clark County Courthouse regarding her divorce case in August 2011. Patricia Doninger, the hearing master, was present at the moment, but neither stopped them nor reported them. What are you allegating that my officer did? I mean, he had me in the room and he asked me, he said, listen, I, I'm supposed to have a female with me and have her check your bra for me, but I just want to get you out of here. He said, so I, can, I just, can I just have you pull up your shirt and show me that there's no drugs in there? And I said, um, well, I would, I would, I would truly let you check my bra because I'm not scared of anything. I said, but well, I really don't trust that's a good idea. I think I'd rather have a female. And you went in there. And this was going to take her home. I was just offended by this. Can't mama go to her? I'm just offended that he asked me to do that. Okay, so store stance, handcuff. Why would I be handcuffed? Why would I be arrested? Can we do something with a little? Why would I be arrested there? For what? Hold on. For what, sir? Hold on. Okay, it was. Why would I be arrested? Can you please tell Turn me? Turn around, put your hands behind Can your you back. Can you please tell me? Turn around, put your hands because behind your Because of false allegations made against the police officer. So what? If you could call up Child Haven for me. How could you prove that that was false? Turn around. We can clearly see that in the presence of the hearing master, Marshall Fox and the other marshal are trying to forcefully arrest Miss Monica while she asks what she did. These inhuman officers didn't listen to a word uttered by her. While their duty is to protect such innocent citizens, Marshall sexually assaulted her and then reported her for false accusation while that young lady is tensed about her divorce case and all of this is done in front of her little girl. How can an officer of the law, a human, be this cruel? How could you prove that that was false? Okay, you're, that was false. You're saying okay. it. Do not turn around. I will also have okay. okay. Stop. What did yeah, I do to anyone? Leave me alone, please. Stop. Yeah. Please Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You can watch the video. The video in the show. I just kind of cut myself. I'm just trying to stay out of trouble, sir. I never did anything to anyone. I'm a law-abiding citizen. How did you do this Why are you here? Because my ex-husband is jealous of me, he doesn't want me to see. That should be okay. So nothing is your fault. No, sir. Okay. He's making up everything. I never did anything to anyone. I've only been trying to be a good person my whole life. And this whole time, everybody keeps trying to beat me down. You got legs for the child. Please come along, please. Matt, we are on record, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to press charges. I don't want to bring anyone. I just wanted to end. I just want to be clear. No, because now, because you. Please, sir. Follow my finger. Yeah, we're happy. Just your eyes. Do you have. Do you have it? No, because if she wants to make the allegations, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll pursue. Well, that? Time you used anything. Well, that? Well, just follow the finger. You gotta do two things at once talk and watch. Never used any kind in our car. No, sir. Have we run her yet? What's that? Have we run her? No, not yet. I haven't run her for warrants yet. The reason. Have you ever been arrested? Just so you guys see, there's nothing in my hands. Uh, Jimmy, I got court. I stopped to do this, so arrest her. I take the kid. We're done. Why would you do that, sir? Because you're making false allegations. I'm not making false allegations, officer. Why would you put me in this position? I'm a good person.
person. Where is that? You already That's just told me you were arrested once before for yeah. false allegations. Okay. In addition to assaulting her sexually and charging her for reporting it, they are trying to put another allegation of consuming drugs on her. They are doing this only because they think they are in a position of authority and are taking advantage of it. This goes to prove that every family court should have cameras to record hearings to catch misconduct such as this. No, I don't want to deal with this, please. I just want to end it. I, okay, it was all lies. It was all lies. It was all lies. It was all lies. Let me go home, please. Let me go. It was all lies. I don't want to deal with anything. It was all lies. All lies. All lies. All lies. Please stop. We can do this the easy way. We can do this to her. Uh -huh. So Why would you let's be back here. So let's Why would you be on, me on record, right on tape, in the courtroom. I don't. I just want to go home, please. Miss, I just want to go home, table. please. Step to the table. That's what happened. Right you, the microphone. You, to, you put me in the room and you asked me to lift up my shirt without it, without a witness. Okay. You asked Take me to lift. Room. You asked me to lift up my shirt without a witness. Did you do this to me? How could you watch? How could you watch? She's got blue hair. Hey. You asked me to pull up my shirt and leave me alone. I don't want to go to jail. I was trying to defend myself. First you said. I don't want to go to jail. He said, he said, can I, he said, can, can you please pull up your shirt without a witness? He said, can you please pull up your shirt without a witness? Yes, uh, I'm going to have to take one kid to Child Haven, book in the custody. Yeah, have them, uh, come over, Mama. Him, he said, can you please pull up your shirt without a witness? And I said, I don't think that's a good idea. Yes, I do. Get us up in my house. If you have a female. All right, send me somebody. How's it going? Why is this happening to someone? Well, he's right down over there, little one. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Okay, I haven't made words. Yeah. Leave me alone! Uh, don't, don't go anywhere yet. The marshals here had despicable, inhuman behavior as they targeted an innocent woman and threatened her with force to arrest her, and if she didn't cooperate, they threatened her with her child. These bully officers did as they pleased and arrested her forcefully while she kept crying. All she wanted was to go home with her kid. She first reported this to the Marshal Internal Affairs, and two months after that, the marshal was fired. On April 5th, Contreras filed a federal lawsuit against Marshall, Kenyon, and Doninger, as well as Clark County, the state of Nevada, and the courts on grounds that her civil rights were violated. But all previous arrests fade in front of this one, another drunk cop who got busted while being severely intoxicated. You understand the position if we put each other in. You by drinking at Cindy's and driving, and me by having being the one to stop you. Okay, I this is my worst nightmare. I hate doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Cincinnati Police Captain Amanda Caton. On February 9th, 2020, Loveland Police Officer Jacob Salomon pulled over Captain Amanda Caton and her husband, Lieutenant Patrick Caton, as they drove home after a late night party. The officer had observed the couple's car swerving and crossing over a solid yellow line. Driveway there. It stops here on the road. Good evening. Hi. Hello, you got your license insurance on real quick? Yeah. I'm stopping initially why I stopped was you made the turn at the five way um, you there's a solid there's a dotted yellow line there and you totally like oh, okay. it was in the middle of your car I am a Cincinnati police officer too if that makes a difference I don't know <laughs> where are you coming from uh, we were downtown Loveland okay. do you have your gun on you I do where's that at in my purse. Alright. All right. Let me do let me do this. Let me put your gun in the car, in the trunk. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Northeast police two. That's not what I meant, but eleven, I'm gonna need you on this one. Hey, pop your trunk for me, please. I was gonna put this on your seat. Yeah, that's fine. Just open your, unlock your car, please. Unlock your car so I can put this in your trunk. Can you unlock your car? 
Unlock the car, man. Okay, here's the problem. I smell alcohol on you, okay? And your your speech is slurred. And you had your gun on you. I'm, I'm putting that in the trunk, but your speech is slurred and everything. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't just... I, I see your badge, but I'm telling you, your speech is slurred. You smell, you reek of alcohol. What, what you know, you put me in a bad spot. You want me to drive home, officer? No, this, no that's not how it's gonna work. You got your gun on you too? I do. Turn on the radio. All right. We're about four blocks from our house. Yeah, we did you don't understand the circumstances right now, okay? No, I don't. You don't. I mean, everything's recorded. I can't. I can't just do nothing now. Okay. You guys both reek of alcohol. You were sleeping, passed out, sleeping when I Who pulled was? you over. I was not. Okay. That's fine. Okay. okay. That's fine, but you, she's slurred and everything. I can't just... No, she's not. You do, yeah. Officer, that's you do what I, you got to that, do. That's why, yeah, that's why I drove, because I was fine. Okay. okay. Well, let's do this. Right. Step yeah, on out with me and talk to me. We, we, Sir, crossed, we crossed a yellow line while we were driving. You do what you got to do. I, and I, I have to. You understand that? I have to. It's not that I want yeah, to. Yeah, you do. Okay. Hold on to your ID. How long have you been a cop? Pat, Pat, stop it. Stop Sir, you've got your gun on you and you're intoxicated too. I am don't, not. Don't. I am not. She just said you were. That's no, why she drove no, home. she didn't. She said that's why no, she drove no, home. I said, I no, no, she drove home because she's not intoxicated. You do what you got to do. Well, here's now, now here's the problem. Two is that you've got your gun on you. Where's that at? It's on my hip. It's on your hip? Okay. All right. Miss Manda, step out with me real quick. Okay. Just talk to me real quick and we'll go from there. It looks like the officer himself isn't too happy after pulling over a fellow cop. If the Catons were civilians, chances are both would be in handcuffs by now and would have been hurled into the back seat of the police car, but it looks like their badge is affording them some immunity. Right, right over here. All right. Have a seat right there for me and we're going to chat. Have a seat. Yeah. Where do you work? Uh, this, since I have the police department. I know. What the, what what district are you at? I'm just transferred to inspections. What's that? Inspections. Okay. We live just down the street. I understand that. My hands are tied. Okay. Everything's recorded and that's you know you yeah, know the I circumstances. Right. Okay. Um, I've got another officer coming to back me up because you both are armed and all that stuff and he's agitated um i'm just going to check your eyes and make sure you're okay and we'll go from there okay, okay. now do you have any head injuries or anything uh no are you epileptic or diabetic at all mm -mm. you wearing contacts for color or anything no, but i'm not gonna take any kind of yeah i'm gonna let me do hgn on right. it Well, and why is that? Well, I mean, you can do the H, whatever, but I'm not, I've got high heels on, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, all right. And, and that, that's fine. That's, I'm right. going to wait till my buddy gets here and then we'll talk about it. Um, regardless, I'm not charging you for the gun. What? Regardless, I'm not going to charge you for the gun. Okay, I'm not going to do that to you. The officer has not only been a bit too lenient with the couple, he also decides to waive off the felony of carrying a weapon while intoxicated, all by himself. Talk about being judge, jury, and the executioner. As the officer performs the HGN, a nystagmus is evident, which means Captain Caton is most probably intoxicated. I think you said you won't do any tests, you won't take your shoes off and do any more tests, right? Yeah, I mean, I got high heels. I know, you could take I those got... off. You got gym shoes in the car or anything? No. <laughs> you know you've had too much drink. You know you drink too much. Drama. We live just down the street. I understand where you live, but you know I... But I haven't had too much drink. You can follow us home if you want. I mean... How long have you been with Cincinnati? 
16 years. I mean, it's, it's beyond too far. I can't just follow you home now. You understand that? It's well, nothing okay. personal. Okay. Okay, but I'm going to have to do what I have to do, okay? I'm going to have to arrest you for drinking and driving tonight. We'll do the paperwork. I'm not going to charge you for the gun. I'm not going to do that to you. I have too much respect for you. But I I have to, I can't not, I, I, you know what I mean? Not, not for this, it's, you know, you understand, right? You understand the position we put each other in. You by drinking at Cindy's and driving, and me by having, being the one to stop you. Okay, I, this is my worst nightmare, I hate doing this. Okay, you got a mad husband up there with a gun, okay? I'm not charging you with the gun, I'm not doing that, because that would be, you know what, weapons under disability, it's a felony, I'm not going to do that to you. Mm. This we can get through though, okay? So I am going to arrest you for drinking and driving right now, okay? And then we'll do the paperwork and we'll offer you a breath test, and if you haven't had that much to drink, you know how that goes, okay? And then if you blow under, if you do blow and you blow under, we'll get you home tonight, okay? We'll get you home regardless tonight, okay? But I am going to have to arrest you for drinking and driving tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Put your glasses on or in your pocket. I'm going to be nice and handcuff you in front. I have to handcuff you. It's our policy for transport. Okay. You have any other weapons on you or anything? No. Okay. So let's do that now. We'll talk to your husband. And he's going to be mad as a badger. But With Captain Amanda Caton in handcuffs, the officers go to her husband to explain what's been going on. Lieutenant Patrick Caton is... Just as expected, Matt is a badger. All right, man. Here's the deal. We're not towing the car, and we're not. We're gonna get you home where you can go with her. Um, just gonna offer her a test and be done with it. What? Yeah. You're gonna offer her a test for what? For well, the uh, breathalyzer test. Are you kidding me? No, don't keep your hands where I can see them though, well, for you. Because you said you have your gun off. on you. Hey. Knock it off. I'm, dude. I'm, I'm doing the best under the circumstances, okay? Lieutenant Caton, dressed in a kilt for reasons which remain unknown, ultimately decide to walk back home on foot, but not without a squabble with Officer Salomon. No, 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 you're not talking to her right now. What? Go walk like you said you were gonna do. You're good to go. Fellas, you know what? I don't know why you're doing this. I really don't know why you're doing this. Okay. Captain Amanda Caton was taken to the police station where she was booked for OVI refusal and a centerline violation. She was not charged in connection with having a firearm while intoxicated. If you think these officers went overboard, well, buckle up for this next one because things went down on a steeper slope even faster. On the 5th of April, around 11.30 p.m., Farmington police officers arrived outside a house from which they had presumably received a 911 call about a domestic dispute. Things would have happened as it would at a normal welfare check except for one thing. This house at 5308 Valley View was the wrong house and was not where the call had come from at all. Watch out for a dog. Police department. Farmington Police. Four one oh eight. Four one oh eight. Can you try to call them back? 
tell them to come to the door. Affirming no one's come to the door? Hey, Affirm, if you can call the RP back and have them come to the door. Farmington, please. It might have been 4308. Is it 43 or 5308? Yeah, it might have been 5308. Right. Is it not 5308? That's what it said right there, right? No, this is 5305, isn't it? 108, can you 10 the address? 5308 Valley View Avenue. Oh. Don't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> the first thing you notice is that the house was marked as 5,305 and not the number the officers had received a call from. Even worse is the fact that they noticed this not long after. Yet what they did next would cost a man his life and alter the trajectory of the loves of an entire family. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, heads up! Shots fired! Shots fired! Yeah, you good? You good? Yeah, back good. up! Back up! Back up! Check yourself! Check yourself! I'm good. Good. Robert Dotson, the homeowner, came out with a gun, and the officers immediately opened fire on him and then retreated. Why did Robert come out with a gun? One possible reason still points to the officers being at fault. They had shown up for a welfare check at night without lights or sirens. This might have caused the Dotsons to assume that it was a home invasion and they needed to protect themselves. Let's move out. Hands up! Man! Go, 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 go! 4108, shots fired again. Copy, shots fired again. 4115, units now. A few minutes later, Dotson's wife came out screaming as she saw her husband covered in gunshots just outside the doorstep. She picked up the gun that Dotson had been holding and shot in the direction of the officers, and they once again returned fire. We can help you back, but we need you to come outside. Yes, it's really important so we can get him help. Oh, they've been shot! Help me! Ma'am, help me! Help me! Help me! Yeah. Okay. He's right at the door. Right at the door? Yeah. Okay. Where's the gun at? Uh, he dropped it and then she picked it up and pointed it at us. Okay. 414, we have the children on the phone. All three are upstairs in 10 four. Mrs. Dotson could be heard pleading with the police to help her husband, all the while still unaware that they were the ones who shot him in the first place. Three kids upstairs. Three kids upstairs. Yeah. Three kids upstairs. Three kids upstairs. He's 10-7. Kids! Police! Police, you're all right. Go with them. He's 10-7. Okay, this is done. Okay, we're good. Easy. No one else needs to come in here. Again? Yeah. Hey, just keep, keep them upstairs. Just stay up there. The three officers involved were placed on paid leave while the chief of police apologized on live TV. However, the state attorney could still be heard saying that the tragedy was unpreventable and the officers worked well within their rights. You must be thinking how bad these cops were, but wait until you meet Officer Derek Chauvin, who killed a man in his custody by being so forceful that left Mr. Floyd unable to even breathe. And then he put his hands on his head, right? That's correct, yes. And there was one officer who said that they were going to tase him, right? That's what I heard, yes. This is former Minneapolis police office Derek Chauvin, who arrested a 46-year-old black man on May 25, 2020. Videos from bystanders and security cameras showed officers taking a series of actions which left Mr. Floyd unable to breathe. And even if he called out for help, nobody helped him. Justified that you were the officer who approached the passenger side of the vehicle. You approached George Floyd on May 6, 2019, is that right? That's correct, yes. And you had your gun drawn when you approached Mr. Floyd, isn't that right? Yes, I pulled it, yes. And when you approached Mr. Floyd, he said, 
don't shoot me, man. I don't want to get shot, right? Something like that, yes. You told him to undo his seatbelt, correct? That's correct, yes, ma'am. And he did that, right? Yes, he did. And then you said, put your hands where I can see them, correct? Yes. And then he put his hands in the air? Yes. And then you told him to put his hands on the dash, is that right? That's correct. And that was when you grabbed his hand and forcibly put it on the dashboard of the vehicle, correct? Well, and yes. And then the other officer with you on the other side of the vehicle changed that to put your hands on your head, correct? That's correct. And then he put his hands on his head, right? That's correct, yes. Chauvin's answers show how remorseless he is as he tells about his oppression on the victim with a straight face. And there was one officer who said that they were going to tase him, right? That's what I heard, yes. And you were yelling pretty loud, correct? Yes, I was, yes. It, it escalated real quick. Some profanity as well, correct? Yes. And you had your gun drawn the whole time you were giving commands, right? Once I started ordering him his, and he refused to show me his hands, yes, I, eventually it escalated where I pulled my gun, yes, ma'am. And he was awake, correct? What's that, ma'am? Mr. Floyd was awake. Was he awake during this incident? Yes. He was conscious? Yes. He didn't appear to be in medical distress to you when you were pulling him out of the car, is that right? He was talking to you, he was standing up, is that right? Um, I don't know if it was specifically, sometimes he was talking, sometimes he was mumbling. Uh, he was incoherent in my mind a lot of the time during there. But you got him out of the car and you handcuffed him, right? That's correct, ma'am. And he stood next to the car, right? Yes, ma'am. He asked you not to beat him up, correct? That's correct, yes. He was able to walk right? Yes, he was. He continued to talk to you. Officer Chauvin seems to have escalated the situation while dealing with Mr. Floyd. He pulled a gun on him while Mr. Floyd didn't do anything except not pay for the cigarettes. Derek Chauvin used excessive and unnecessary force on Floyd while pushing him against the dashboard of the car. His crime wasn't big enough to be treated with such caution and force, and yet Chauvin stays a heartless man in front of court too. The racist officer bullied him and made him unable to breathe, which soon caused his death. In the courtroom, he seems like he has no regrets for what he's done. On May 29th, the Hennepin County attorney announced third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter charges against Derek Chauvin. He was sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison on June 25, 2021.